Hi, it's EJ from Backbeat. In this video, we're going to change the strings on our 61. And um, I've gotten a lot of comments and a lot of requests from people about changing strings. And I thought maybe this would be a good time for us to go through it together and I'll show you how I go about it. So uh, let's get over to the bench and give it a shot. Okay, well, I'm going to have to use what I call my wiggle cam, where I'm holding on to the camera and trying to talk at the same time. It's going to be interesting as we start turning things on, just exactly how I can pull this off. But um, we're going to go ahead now, and we're going to change the strings on the 61 reissue that the last video was about. Um, in the last video, we did everything but change the strings, because I always use the old strings for setup. So anyway, first thing I want to tell you is there's really, in my world, there's only two types of strings here. This string here is the factory string for a Hofner. The Hofner I'm talking about are the 501s and the 502s. I'm not sure about all the others. This is the string. It's German-made. Hofner backs it. it um, they claim on the package or on the website that this puts the original sound back into the bass when the bass was bought new, it had these flat wound strings on it. They're a slightly heavier gauge than what everybody's been moving over to. And that is the Labella deep talking bass strings. Now I'll insert the website where you can buy these and these. These run about 80 bucks a set. And the Labellas run about $36 a set. And on the website where you can order the Labella, there's a little paragraph there about this is the string Paul McCartney's been using for the last 10-15 years. One of the good things about this is this is a stainless steel wrapped string. I'm not sure what that is. But the um, gauge of the string is slightly smaller than that one. So putting this string on requires no filing of the nut up here to allow for a thicker, thicker and the thinner doesn't really bother it, as long as we have the angle here correct. We'll get into that in a minute. So I'm going to go ahead and insert where you can pick up these strings from. And um, you can order them yourself there, and you can read a little bit about them. But we're going to use the labellas on the base here. Okay, in the last video, I had these strings off, and I put the used strings back on to do a setup. And now that we're changing them, when I put these back on, I put them back on wrong, and I did that deliberately because I wanted to show you what not to do. So I'm going to put this white piece of paper behind here so you can see this. You see the string is coming off the top of the uh, tuner peg. I'm going to lay this down, see if I can put my finger in there. Right in here. You see how it's coming off the top? It should be wrap so that's coming off the bottom. By doing that, our angle here at the nut is proper. By having it up high like this, we're allowing for fret buzz or some kind of buzz maybe through the nut or whatever. We just want to eliminate any kind of problem like that. But this one and this one I put on deliberately upside down to show you. Now before we get started, I just want to point out a couple things here. Hofner bases, I know a lot of you know this already, are 30 inch scale. And what that means is that from the zero fret up to where the bridge is, it's a 30 inch measurement, roughly. I'll explain that. Here, our first fret, so let's go back to the zero fret, up to the 12th fret right here is 15 inches. That's halfway up the scale. That's important to remember so that when we do the intonation and adjust this, we have a starting point. Let me explain that. I'm going to get one of my drawings in case that wasn't clear. We have a 30 inch scale base from the zero fret all the way up to the bridge. And I know the bridge can move, that's why we're bringing this up now, is 30 inches roughly. From either direction, at the 12th fret, should be 15 inches. 15 inches 
and 15 inches gives us our 30 inch scale. That's going to be important when we intonate the bass. Okay, one of the things I don't do is I don't cut the strings off. A lot of people will start snipping and take them all off. I don't recommend that on a Hofner. I, re I recommend that you change each string one at a time because of the floating bridge. Why start all over? Also, I don't cut them off. I take them off and I save them because the old strings are exactly um, what we use these old ones for. They're great for doing setup work, seeing, you know, doing uh, adjusting the bridge height for string height and all that. You don't want to be taking off and on your new set and, you know, stretching them and unstretching them and bending them up here and, you know, each time you put them on they go on a little different. So I always save the string and don't take one all the strings off at once. You can imagine if we were to cut all these strings how instantly the stress relaxes on the neck. And you know and I know from watching a lot of the videos where we've steamed these necks off and done some work on the necks that um, we um, there isn't much in here that's holding that. It's a strong joint but why mess with it? So we're going to do one string at a time here and uh, once we have them all on, we'll do the um, tuning and intonation. So I'm going to go ahead right now and use my string winder and take off each one string. I just opened the package of the Labella strings, and this is something I want to share with you. They come with what I call string dice on there. You can see this one says one, this one says two, three, and four. And that's a great thing. Um, I know some people would say, geez, if you don't know what string it is, you shouldn't probably be messing with the bass, but in a case like myself where I have a lot of basses and I put new strings on, I leave these on until I'm ready to play them. So I can open the case and look at it and I know that those are a set of strings that I put on there. But once, obviously, when you start to play, you want to take these off because they're going to rattle like crazy. But that's just kind of a great feature. And you'd be surprised how many people have put the A string on in the E position and had to take it off and then once it's all coiled up here now you've got to try to straighten it to go up here and that makes that A string just sick forever. So kind of a interesting point here on the string. At this point it might be worth pointing out a few things here. One is you know um, because the Hofner is a short scale and it has the smaller diameter peg very tiny hole in the middle there a lot of people have written to me and said, um, can I put regular bass strings on there? And you know right away, if you put the regular standard long scale string on there, you end up cutting off the taper at the top. And there's no way that that string is going to fit through that hole. Plus, being such a narrow quarter inch diameter, roughly quarter inch diameter peg, that big fat string around there is just going to be huge. Um, so... Um, you know, I've seen people insistent on doing that and they'll take these out and they'll drill them out and they'll put these big huge type of tuners on and it just looks crazy. So I thought I'd drag this Gibson Ripper in here just to show you this type of string where you have the hole in the middle, big fat peg, fat string on it. You know, that, that that's just not going to work on this. And the other issue is down here where the string goes into the tailpiece. It isn't a hole coming through. You have to, it's a slot. So this winding here has to fit up in that slot and then you pull it forward to lock it into the end here. So that would mean you'd have to hog out that slot down there. Highly not recommended putting um, standard bass strings or even any other short scale strings that are of a heavy gauge on this bass. A lot of tension on the neck it's just not built for it. When you install the new string, it has this washer on the end right here. And um, you can see the shape of the washer here. And as I said, on the back side, it slips up into a joint there. And you pull it so that the washer goes into the groove there. Now I can't do it holding the camera in one hand, so I'm going to go over to one of my squiggles. This is what it looks like with the 
string attached. This is it from the side. Coming down here, we want it to seat in the groove sideways like this. I've seen a lot of them like this. I see a lot of them like that. When I see a lot of these bases like for sale on Reverb and eBay and I zoom in on them, I can see those all sticking out like that. It's just, you know, that's not going to seat that string. It's not going to play well. It's not going to stay in tune. We want it to go in there just right. Let's see if I can get that to go in. This is how we want it to be in there. That's how it should be seated correctly. You turn it a little like that, it gets caught. The string will tighten, but it'll never stay in tune. That's wrong. Each yeah. Now, as I said, because underneath here is a groove, it's not a hole. It actually has to be pushed up through the slot and hooked in the end. You have to be careful when you're winding this around because I've done it myself. I keep winding and winding and cranking and cranking and I'm wondering what the heck. Um, and then I realize that it dropped down and it's just laying right here and it's short. So what I do is I use a capo right here and notice that I put it on top of the fret. You don't want to put it down in on the fretboard because you could bend the string slightly. It's a new set of strings that we don't want to do that. So I have it just snug enough here to keep the tension on the string while I go ahead and wrap this up here. Now let's talk about cranking this. I think it's pretty much elementary, but I think we should talk about it anyway because I've seen this too. When you put a string on a Hofner, you want to, on the E and the A, you want to roll it off to the right. And on the uh, D and the G, we want to roll it to the left. Okay. And um, to do that, what I do, because we want to have at least two to three complete windings around each tuner. I try to shoot for two. And what I do is I measure past the tuner three inches. And right here you can see on the cloth wrapping with my Sharpie, I put a little mark there. I don't cut these. Don't cut them. Not yet anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and put this on here. And remember, we're going to wind this so that when the, by the time we're done winding, this string will be coming off the bottom of the tuner. And because the Hofner has such a lightweight string and it's so thin, I do lock these. I put them on like you would if you were to lock the guitar string on a guitar, where I go halfway around and I bring it up under itself. Okay now, so I have this E string on now, it's done correctly. You can see that the string is coming off the bottom of the wrap, as opposed to the one that was wrong where it's at the top. And you can literally see the angle difference. And you want to have that angle come up over the nut just right. Okay, so here we have all four strings wound correctly. Each one, the E and the A coming off to the right and the D and the G coming off to the left. They're all wound so that the winding is at the top and the string is coming off the bottom, giving us the right angle coming up over the nut. Now I am going to put some graphite down in the nut here to help these slide a little better. I'll do that shortly. I think you guys have seen me do that in all my other videos. But I'll show you again real quickly. All right, the graphite in the nut is basically I take a number two pencil. See if I can get that to focus there. And I take a razor blade and I literally scrape the, the graphite off the pencil into the nut. I've tried a lot of stuff, you know, for uh, doing this. And I always go back to just using plain old pencil graphite. It works the best for sure. It stays in there. It's not that messy. You just pop the string back in. I'm going to go ahead now and put graphite in all four of these. Okay, so we've got the new strings on. I put some graphite in the nut here and now we need to tune this up. So the one thing I do once I put the string on, and you do this, I'm sure you guys do with all your guitars, you just kind of pull on the string a little bit. You want to stretch them. Don't pull too much. Just to know, you don't want to damage the string or the winding or anything, but you want to get some of that stretching out of there, get them to seat good, and then um, we're going to 
put our app on. I use one on my cell phone here. And we're going to try to let this kind of stretch in a little bit. Before I try to really um, intonate this, I want these strings to set a while. So let's go ahead and tune this up and stretch the strings out. And then um, let's see if we can uh, get them to hold for now. So on the 61 bass where you have the tuners up here at the other end that have the uh, two on a strip or two on a plate, um, we talked about it in the last video when we, re we reviewed the 61 Hofner about the backlash in there. Um, and you know there was some talk on the site there under comments about how to work with that tuner where you, um, you bring it up to the um, note. You don't go past it and bring it down. You constantly bring it up to where it should be. So it's a little tricky. Um, I can see why some of these basses in 61 came through with the individual tuners. I think the individual tuners are much better. But anyway, I have my app on here and I'm going to show you about tuning with harmonics here. Now if you watch the um, needle here, I'm hoping you can see that okay. Um, it's um, pretty much right there at 440. It's just hanging right in the zero there. I stretched the string the best I could, but I want to show you the harmonic on the, on the G. So here's our standard open G. It's just a little bit north, and it's right. the harmonic is right on. Harmonic is right spot on for the G string. Okay, so that's just one harmonic. Because what we want is we want to have the open and that one spot on, but we also want to be able to push down on the 12th fret. And you see that's a little bit um, positive, a little sharp, okay? But this particular bass at the 12th fret measures 4 30 seconds. I normally set mine up at 3 30 seconds. So I know that sounds like a minor amount, but by the time you get um, all the way down here, it's, it's, it's double that. So um, I'm still trying to figure out on this bass in the future whether I want to steam off the neck and do a neck reset, or if I should be sanding, taking more off of the saddle down here. There's plenty here to take off of. Um, might be a lot easier to start there, but I really hate to... Um, bring that down and then end up doing a neck, neck reset anyway. So <clears throat> we got to do this string by string here. Now see here, here the D, I got to bring that up. I'm bringing it up a little bit at a time, we don't want to go past it. And what I can do to bring it down is because the new strings, is I can pull on the string to stretch it back down. But I want to find out where it is. Harmonic is perfect, right on zero. Let's try the actual 12th fret. See, it's a little bit sharp. And that's okay. If you want high action on your Hofner, I would set it up so it's open, and I would actually go for the actual pressed down 12th fret harmonic and not worry too much about the the harmonic here. So because if you have high action and you're playing a high G or anywhere up here it's going to be sharp if you tune it to the harmonic. So you would be better off tuning it to the actual fretted 12th note. I try to get the open, the 12th harmonic and the 12th fret to be spot on on my basses. And to actually adjust that I'm going to switch over to a different bass um, because I'm, this one is set high and I'm going to um, make some changes on this bass to improve that. But I wanted to explain that. Here's the A. It's hanging right around there. Again, these strings are still stretching in, so it's going to wander a little bit. harmonic, it's a little sharp. So um, these strings need to be stretched in a little bit 
before we actually mess with this. But that's the concept of actually how to position the bridge back here. Now there has been times when we get maybe three of the strings just perfect, but one we can't seem to get the harmonic or the twelfth right. Well, I just want to show you that these little frets right here, let me get this a little sharper there. You know, there's grooves there and you can move the fret one way or the other. In the case of the E string, you'd have to move it, it would be sharp. So, um, if it was too, um, you know, if we get closer, it's um, too sharp, we need to move it back. Now, I've seen guys playing with this thing totally at an angle. In fact, I noticed Paul McCartney's always got his at an angle. I don't know why that is. I don't know. That just doesn't make any sense to me. Um, but um, I know that Paul doesn't play with open strings. He won't. He always plays on a fret. So maybe that has something to do with the way he's tuning it. But I've had some where these come straight across at an angle here, and I've had to move the E, e um, fret here, I'm going to call it a piece of a fret wire, into the A track, and it was spot on. So th this kind of all relates, you know, where this is positioned, where that fret falls in the bridge, the height of the bridge, the string height, and how we wrap the strings, and um, the neck. I also think this neck needs to be pulled back a little. But to actually do the harmonics, I'm going to pull out a 63 uh, reissue, and let's look at it over there. That one has the individual tuners. I don't, don't have an issue, and I think we can um, be a little more specific over there. So I'm going to switch over now. Okay, so I've been messing with the harmonics here, and I want to show you again. I don't know if you can see this or not. There's our G string. It's slightly sharp. Um, these strings, um, well, for the moment now, let's just leave that alone. I want to go to the 12th harmonic. The important thing is that even though it's sharp right now, and I can change that, but it's consistent. Even with the harmonic, it's sharp. See? But all three, Are spot on. So what I generally do is I put, because I know now that where that is on the G string right here, where it's sitting on that brass piece of fret wire on the bridge, I put a little dot on there with my sharpie, just right on the string. There's just no way that you can intonate a Hofner so that all four of those remain exactly where they were when they left the factory. So what I mean is, if the next string, the D, that's right on, harmonic is right on, and okay, so now the uh, 12th fret is going slightly um, flat. Let's go to the next one. There's our A. Both that and the harmonic are good. It's flat. So we, we could keep doing it all the way down, and you get down here to the E string and the 12th fret, the played 12th fret, not the harmonic, is sharp. So what I do is I find, once I've marked the string, where it is perfect for all three, I have black dots on the strings. And that tells me, that pattern of dots, when I'm done, it could look something like this on the strings, you know. It could be in a different order than the horizontal dots that the factory did. Here's one of my drawings, okay. So um, it's very possible to get this pattern. I'm going to have to move. I know where it needs to be according to the dots for each string to be spot on. So I'll move these frets within the grooves to match that pattern. So in other words, I'm going to quickly draw this here while we're running on tape here. By the time we get done with this, it's very possible that my fret wire in the bridge might look something more like this, that. 
a lot of people are just constantly moving it around. You know, whatever string sounds like it's out to them. It's usually the E string. But by doing the open string and the 12th harmonic and then the actual string, you can get that almost perfect. Now, I say almost perfect because, again, remember, we just spoke that if you have high action, you like that higher action, you're always going to go slightly sharp when you push it down. You can imagine the farther you push that string down to the fret, you're stretching the string farther, it's going to go slightly sharp. So it's a combination of all these things, you know. So um, fresh strings, good strings, properly strung up on the tuner, um, the bridge set properly, um, the, uh, you know, a good adjustment on the neck, a slight bow forward, not a really curve. Um, sometimes if you have down here, we, on one of the videos, I think it was a club bass where this was rolled up and I had to steam that down. There are so many things that you have to do to get this spot on. And once you got it spot on, you really got something here. So, um, I hope th that this has helped to explain um, how I go about changing the strings, no brainer, you know, just do a nice neat job. And then um, the rest of this with the harmonics is where I could spend hours here doing this and until I finally get it. Um, then once I do get it, I put it in the case and I store it in a, you know, not in a hot room or anything. I try to keep my house, the humidity, um, the way it should be in the shop here and um, I store it that way and um, so there's a lot that you can do I probably am going to get more questions than actually answering anybody's um, questions on how to do this but um, I'm hoping that I was able to explain it with my drawings and trying to clarify a lot of that um, the bridge too you know I've seen people um, hook the strap Hoffner cells where it's an actual hook on here. You know, the one that goes around the neck and everything, and that's pulling on all that stuff. That's crazy. But, um, and getting back to the 61 here, I need to lower the action. Because as I just explained, the higher action, you're going to get a little sharp here. And when you get it right, anywhere on the string, I mean, here's a D string. I should be able to push E. It should be spot on. It should be sharp or flat. F, you know, G, it should be, or even the harmonics, the 5th fret on the D string and the 7th the fret harmonic, they should be spot on. Harmonics are great, but you also have to take in the factor for a lot of other things here. So I hope this was helpful, and um, I... Um, I think I covered everything here. It's it's the days of just throwing, cutting your strings off, throwing them away, and just taking out a pack, opening it up, and putting on a set of strings and winding them and ready to play. They don't exist anymore. Not with these Hofners. Hofners are very particular. In any bass, actually, I would um, probably set it up the same way. I mean, you can uh, you can see why on some of the more modern basses where they have the uh, the um, Tunematic here where you can move this forward and back. If I was Hofner, I would try to come up with a bridge that you can where that is adjustable forward and back, each one individually. You know? That's something I think that everybody would improve upon. Well, that's it for changing strings. Um, I hope I've showed you some stuff there that's useful to you and helpful. Um, you know, you can always uh, shoot me a an email or a comment and I'll do my best to respond and um, I also want to thank a lot of you again who have been in touch with me regarding uh, you know the pandemic and how I'm doing and I've tried to respond to most comments the best I could um, they seem to be coming in from all different places different times so uh, sometimes I get a little confused whether I've answered it or not but anyway um, and also I, I am hearing people say about the music in the background so this is probably my first video without background music we'll see how that goes over and as far as doing sound tests well I bought one of these and I do a lot of my shooting and editing well my editing 
on my iPad. I have a very powerful iPad. And this allows me to um, put the sound directly into the um, iPad without me having to use the mic on this guy right up here. Um, because when I do that, you can imagine with a bass, everything in here rattles. Everything in my toolbox, just everything. So um, I'm hoping that we can do some sound comparison from the different years, different pickups, stuff like that. So um, I'm heading that way. And um, hopefully once all this craziness with uh, the COVID-19 goes away, I can get out there and pick up a few more uh, vintage basses and stuff for us to share. So thanks, and I appreciate everybody who is subscribing or has subscribed. And I encourage everybody, if you haven't subscribed, please do. And um, so take care, be well, and we'll see you soon. Thanks. Mm -hmm.